Hey guys, welcome to this episode. I am super excited. See, I'm doing the Chuck Barris gong show thing. Um, now, there's somebody that I've kind of neglected that's critical to the show, to the episodes. I think you all have gotten used to this person, and I've kind of, you know, just dropped the ball, and you're... You're just there, and I kind of got used to you, and I don't give you the credit I should. So let's take a minute and say a special thanks to somebody, and that's the pointer. The pointer. Wait a minute. Where'd you come from? Big pointer? Baby pointer? Chick flick teal? Chick flick teal. What has been going on in my shop? You know what? Mrs. Olson, Honest Abe, do you think I pay you just to hang up there and just let whatever happens, happens in my shop while I'm not here? You know what, just a minute. Fortunately, I have a great deal of experience with human resources, that's HR, at work. I won't get into all that. This isn't about me. This is about you. Don't help him. Anyway, I got some investigation. I'll be back with you in a minute. Turns out little pointer is too small to talk. And this one certainly isn't talking much. When I started questioning pointer, chick flick teal pointer, first thing is he tries to put the finger on Mrs. Olson. Honest Abe takes the fifth. And so I have to turn to Christmas Gnome who conveniently covers its eyes with the stocking cap. Oh, I didn't see anything. So the very last witness I have to this travesty would be Santa. And of course, Santa takes a dive and says, oh, I wasn't here. This, this event, or whatever you want to call it, happened on Christmas Eve, and he claims he was completely out of town on December 24th. How convenient, y'all. What are you going to do about this? This is disgusting. Sorry you have to see all this. This is, this is really bad. It's, it's, it's actually embarrassing for me on the quality channel I have. So I've talked to all these people, I guess they're people, and said, what are you going to do to remedy this? I mean, discipline is supposed to be positive and something good is supposed to come out of this. And so, so I said, what, what are you all going to do? Well, they as a group suggested that they would take a more positive role in the episodes from this point forward. I said, how? Give me an example. They said, well, we'll pick the music this time. And so they did, and they picked uh, the group. I'd like to commend them, but they picked the music, and it is the copulating blues in a, a series of songs with innuendos and double entendre snuck by the censors between 1929 and 1940. Jeez. That's great, isn't it? The copulating blues. Really? It can't get any worse than this. But what do I got left? I am totally thrown for a loop. Um, oh yeah, matchbook of the episode. Let's try to salvage this with the matchbook of the episode. I have a bunch of random matchbooks I haven't sorted through yet. I just pulled the, uh, the staples out and flattened them out. So let's just put them in the Folgers can. Yeah, I'm trying to help you out, Mrs. Olson. In the Folgers can. We'll shake them up, and we'll pick one. Let me see here. All right. What do we got? Really? Dick's Inn? Dick's Inn Restaurant. Dick's Inn. Well, you know what? I'm not going to recommend that you eat at Dick's Inn, but if you do, that's on you. Wow. I don't, I don't know what to do now. The only thing left to do now is just get to the bench and get some work done.